The 5090 has been out for almost nine months now. And as everyone knows, this thing's fast, this thing's hot, this thing pulls a lot of power, and I can fix two of those while keeping the other one. Now, if you've ever watched my channel before, you pretty simply know it's about to come. We're gonna undervolt the thing. MSI Afterburner, like this week, released 4.6.6, which is actually the stable version that supports the 5000 series. So guess what? We fully have full support, not just some weird beta. What this also means is that if you do have a 50 series, you can update to this and you will get the full memory bandwidth overclock that's allowed, plus 3000. My channel is about fully maximizing your performance. Why would I want to undervolt? Why would I want to lose performance? Well, in reality, if you're comparing it stock, you're actually not going to be really losing any performance. You might lose a little bit compared to your overclock. But in my opinion, especially if you live somewhere where it's warm out, like for me, it's still 75, 80 degrees Fahrenheit outside. It does get a little hot in my room when I'm gaming, especially because my PC is equal to about half a space heater. So about 800 watts when I'm actually playing games. The undervolt does help. And for me being cooler, it's going to help me perform better compared to a couple more FPS. So before I go into teaching you how to actually undervolt, let's go into my actual performance numbers and see how does the 5090 perform when undervolted? All of these tests were done at 4K because I have a 5090, I have a 4K monitor. I think that if you have a 5090, you should be running 4K, or if not, a high-end 1440p monitor, where at that point, the actual difference in FPS is going to lessen. If you have something like a 5080, 5070, 5070 Ti, and you're running 1440p or even 1080p on like a 5060 Ti, these numbers are going to be very comparable so that you can kind of keep that in mind. We are comparing this against my overclock, which is about 3200 megahertz in game, um, plus 300 on the core, full voltage, full memory, and then my undervolt, which is actually set to 950 millivolts at the same exact frequency that my stock 5090 Tough runs at about 2790 megahertz. That is also with the memory slider maxed out. It doesn't add any power draw in my experience, so you might as well do it. And then stock as well, you know, stock. Starting out here with 3D Mark Speedway, as you can tell that the overclock score is much higher. Um, when you really do do the math though, compared to 14796, 15430 is only about 4.2 percent faster than stock which means i think it's about three and a half percent faster than the undervolt the undervolt is actually faster than stock remember this is with the full vram so this is actually running about 150 megahertz less with also 10 percent less power draw than stock and overclocked for me personally if i can get the same fps as stock while also 10% lower power draw, that's a no-brainer for me. But let's like see actually how it performs in a game. Now looking at Call of Duty Black Ops 6, I know Black Ops 7 comes out in a few days. I know that this is in 4K, which is not what most people play it in. But the overclock is about, I'd say about 6 to 7% faster than the undervolt. But look, for me, in my opinion, I play a lot of my games at an FPS cap. At 240 FPS, 240 hertz, that's going to be a 225 FPS cap. I am way above that, pretty much there in the lows, which means I'm going to have a good experience, dropping my actual power draw even more. So for me, the 20 extra FPS is nice, but when I'm playing a game with my G-Sync settings, it's not the end of the world, and the lower power draw will be much nicer. But let's look at the GPU FPS. GPU FPS says about the same thing with the percentage difference being about the same. You get about 20 FPS more in the averages, 20 FPS in the low fifth FPS, and then you get 13 FPS more with the overclock compared to the undervolt and the low 1%. See, these are all good FPS. Like 4K, remember, anything over 220 FPS is going to be a good gaming experience. But now let's look at a game that is more actually focused on competitiveness, getting that high FPS. Is there even a difference? These are all typically CPU bound. Counter-Strike 2. Now, the only reason I did actually even add this into my testing was because I was thinking back to when I did my 5090 review, comparing it to my 4090, and I did vividly remember that the 5090 got me higher FPS in Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike is a lot different than Counter-Strike Go. 
there's a lot actually more GPU bound, and this proves it as well. Look, I am losing 30 FPS in average FPS just by running my undervolt over my overclock, and the undervolt actually loses to stock. My guess is that this actually has to do with the core clock being lower. This game doesn't use a lot of VRAM. I mean, think about it. It's based off a game from 2005, if you really think about it. But the core itself is what matters, especially at 4K. So I would say that this might be a game you actually want to run the overclock on. Um, you want the highest FPS possible. But also, if you're playing at 4K, you're not really getting the fastest gaming experience but whatever um <laughs> i do think that i would still run the undervolt but this is a game where the gpu isn't pulling that much power i'd be perfectly fine running the overclock and i probably would but how do you even undervolt the gpu itself that is what we're actually going to work on now all you need is msi afterburner so here is the actual download link to msi afterburner 4.6.6 it is not currently on the msi afterburner website but that's okay because that means that we're not going to have to deal with norton so all you gotta do is just do 4.6.6 stable and to give it a couple seconds to actually download i think it's going to ask me yeah i've already downloaded this so that's fine just go through the download but we're going to open up msi afterburner and you're going to see this now i'm going to reset it for this video just because but let's also, while we're at it, let's actually make this a lot bigger so that you guys can see it. So let's reset it just like this. Now, if you are on a 50 series card, the first thing I'm gonna actually recommend is that you max out your memory. Every single 50 series card that I've personally owned, so I've personally owned a 5070, a 5080, and a 5090, as well as every single 50 series card I've worked on with my clients, such as the 5070 Ti as well. I guess that's the only one. But every single one I've touched has been able to do these 3000 megahertz. So that's something I'm going to really recommend. As well as if your card is not a 5090 or does not have a max power limit, max out that power limit to whatever it might be. It's different for every single card, but I would highly recommend that you do increase that. At this point, this gets a little different between everything else. So for me, I'm going to hit control F. So when I hit control F, let's see if I can make this bigger. Yeah, I can. Cool. When I hit control F, you're going to see this weird graph. What is this weird graph? These are your frequency points. So let's say that I'm running 950 millivolts. It's going to run at 2610 megahertz. So, or if I'm going to run 1050, it's going to run at 2895. For me, this card averages about 2790 on stock, which means it runs about 1.05 volts. Um, it's different for every single card. Every single card is a little bit different, but here's what I'm going to recommend for me on a 5090. This is what I do. I take this 950 millivolt spot. I am going to actually use the MSI afterburner window and I'm going to drag it up till it says 2790. The reason why I have to do this is because for some reason, my car just does not like um, when I do it the same way I did with my 40 series. So I'm going to set it, which is about 180. And instead of just hitting apply, I'm going to hit sh left shift and I'm going to highlight all of the points to the right. When I do that, it's going to group them all. So if I move one, it moves them all. Let's look. And here you go. Just like that. I'm going to bring these all the way down to the bottom. Why? Because then once I hit apply, it flattens it out. And it means that the highest you'll get is 2790 at 950 millivolts. Now I'm going to open up 3D Mark Time Spy now, or just some sort of stress test. And I want to show you something that's a little weird. Loading up a 1080p version of Speedway just because I don't need the full power, but we are going to actually show what I'm doing. So this is a little bit different actually, just because I am recording. But when I was running this undervolt, I was getting about 2640 in the test. Um, and as you can see now, I'm getting about 2602. That's a lot different than the 2790 that I actually had running. If we hit this though, you can see that the curve goes down to 940 at 2625 
right about where it is, temperature is affecting it. So for some reason, when I am undervolting these cards, it is actually going about 10 millivolts less, which is heavily dropping the frequency, more than just 15 to 30 megahertz, which I'd understand, but 150 megahertz. Asus, I don't know if this is something that you have going on or if this is something that um, other manufacturers are having as well, but what I will say is that it does not matter if I use MSI Afterburner, GPU Tweak, uh, EVGA Precision X1, even though that's kind of dead, they all have the same issue and I cannot properly undervolt. So hopefully this is something that can be fixed, but for right now, this is my workaround and this is what performs best. But I hope you guys did enjoy this video. I hope that you were able to undervolt your 50 series card, get lower temperatures, get the same or even higher performance, get a little bit of overclocking out of it, as well as just be able to enjoy your games much better. Mixing this with G-Sync and V-Sync, you're truly going to have the best gaming experience possible. Hope you enjoy your games. There's a lot of new games coming. Get subscribed, join the Discord so we can all play the games together and talk about them. Make sure you're getting your PC at the highest performance. I'll see you guys later.